Welcome, Soul Fam. You're listening to Let the Sunshine In Podcast. I'm Sarah Beth Sulio, a.k.a. Princess Sunshine, the heart-healing singing shaman and founder of Royal Hummingbird's Sacred Healing Arts. I'm in search of connecting with my soul family. I've been walking my hero's journey for quite some time now, and I'm ready to join forces in a more intentional way to collaborate with those on a similar path to being of service in the highest and best way possible. I'm here to share my experiences, my medicine and wisdom, and to also connect you to some amazing souls I have met along the way. Consider me your biggest cheerleader, your number one fan, because I believe that anything is possible 100% of the time. So let's dream big, shoot past beyond the stars, and bring a new world into being. Why? Because we can. I'm so honored to share this time and space with you because I'm sharing all my love, spreading joy, and shining light on all that is. I hope you enjoy this episode of Let the Sun Shine In. Do you know what time it is? It's shine time. 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 It's shine time, shine time. Come on. Hey, hey, soul fam. Welcome back to another episode of Let the Sunshine In podcast. I'm your host, Princess Sunshine, and as always, it's an honor and a pleasure to be able to spend this time and space with you. I'm so excited to be on this podcast today because I get to share my paranormal road trip experience with you. I just came back from a mystical weekend in the woods, and basically it was this paranormal retreat um, that was being held at the Lions Camp at Wrightwood, California, um, which is about two and a half hours away from where I am in San Diego. Now, the reason I went to this paranormal road trip was one, I have always been in the into the paranormal. I always loved watching ghost adventures and like the dead files and, you know, and learning more about mediumship, you know, watching Teresa Caputo and then the um, Hollywood medium. I forget the guy's name right now, but, um, you know, stuff like that. I've always been interested in that. And, you know, so I also wanted to face my own fear of seeing scary things so to speak right so I know in one point of my life I had the ability to see things and I think I at one point it was so scary that I shut that off um and so what I was hoping to see is like you know how I've changed in perspective and to go and open and basically experience what it feels like to be in that type of environment of actually quote-unquote ghost hunting so to speak um so anyways um first of all i do want to thank lashawn butler and jamie smith for the invitation to this uh camping trip it was the most awesome experience i ever had in relation to camping and um exploring the paranormal um but let me back up um let me actually talk about the ride up um so i was carpooling with another participant by the name of jody and it's such a small world you won't believe this shit when i tell you this okay so (laughs) so you know we're in conversation and turns out i so i actually met jody at a previous event um doing the same thing again learning about mediumship and connecting with spirit um and that was a few years ago but um in the conversation she, we were talking about how I previously was a pole dance instructor. And she was like, no way, were you in Miramar? I'm like, yeah. And she goes, I took your class. Because <laughs> I ran a group on when I first opened my pole studio. And that's what helped me like build my business, right? And um, she was able to take an intro to pole class. She said she only took one class, but she was like, yeah, I took your class. So I knew you. <laughs> And what's so crazy is she lived in Miramisa. I lived in um, 
Poway at the time. Well, Rancho Penasquitas, um, I was, I was in between places. And then, um, <clears throat> and then turns out, you know, she moves to Chula Vista. I'm still here in Rancho Penasquitas, but it's just so crazy how, like, we were already connected even before the last event. Um, <clears throat> and then on the way up, you know, we, I kept seeing my numbers, 22, 1, 122, and then all the angel numbers, 111, 444, 555, 777. So we already knew that, you know, it was going to be a magical weekend. Like we were actually going to get something out of it. Um, <clears throat> one thing I had mentioned to Jody on the way up was like, I really, like I said, wanted to get rid of that fear of, you know, wanting to see something scary. And one thing that she reminded me of, it was that when we set the intent that only the highest and best um, is allowed in our field, nothing else can enter. No matter what, there is no choice. Like, that's it. Like, they're not allowed, you know? And, um, but at the same time, yes, I understand that I get that. But at the same time, I was like, oh, I don't know. I just saw have those like eerie feelings sometimes, you know, and it's just like, you know, she was like, imagine this. She was like, can you see the most scariest, 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 scariest ever scenario in your in your head? Like, are you able to picture the most scariest thing? I'm like, yeah, I guess so. She's like, then are you able to send love to that thing? I'm like, oh, hell yeah, that was, that's easy. She's like, then you're good, dude. Like, there's, it's all energy, like, you know, stand your ground, say your protection prayers, and if you see something that's not normal, that's out of the norm, that seems dark, you send it love, and bam, okay, I got this, right? So, okay, feeling good, feeling good. So... We get to our cabin, we've, you know, we, we get to the place, we check in, we are in our cabin and unloading our stuff. I'm saying a few sentences, we're having a little chit chat and she goes, hey, did you hear that? I'm like, hear what? She's like, there's a man in our cabin. I'm like, no, there's not. And then she starts running out the cabin, like, to go look. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> so she's, like, checking to see, you know, looking out the window. She's like, I don't see any men out there. Looking out the other window, opening the door. And then we go outside to go around the cabin. There's no man there. She's like, I swear to you, Sarah, it was clear as day. I heard, hello. And it was a man's voice. And I said... I was talking. I didn't hear anything. He was like, it was over. You're talking clear as day. It said, hello. I was like, holy shit. Here's our first experience. And basically what they call that is an, a disembodied voice. Um, they also call that EVP phenomena. Um, what is it? It's, uh, Shoot, I can't think of all the uh, things right now. Um, but basically, if you were to have a recorder in your hand um, and was recording, you probably could catch that hello, right? So um, we'll go into using equipment later, but I just wanted to just let you know, like, that was that first experience. And once she said that, like, we immediately, like, said, we're sleeping with the lights on. I actually had all my shaman stuff, so I opened sacred space. And when, so let me go back, go back up. When we first entered the cabin, it did feel creepy. And so I did open sacred space there. Once I opened sacred space, it lightened up and it felt better. But still, even so, with sacred space open, we, she heard that voice. So I was like, holy crap, this is gonna be crazy. But, you know, at the, and all of a sudden, I was like, all right, stay open. This is why we're here. Remember, we're here to face our fears and we're here to know, you know, and basically learn what it feels like and what not so that we can just continue to move forward in our journey of learning more about spirit and, you know, um, how to be allies with them. Anywho, so, you know, we have this experience and then we go to our first event, so our first class workshop, um, and it was learning about pendulums. So, you know, I already know about pendulums, but again, I love going into classes with beginner's mind because you always can pick up something new. 
So we talked about pendulums, how they're used, how some how people's pendulums, yes and no's are up, down. Some um, others are counterclockwise, clockwise, and vice versa. So, you know, talking about that. Um, one thing I actually saw for the first time was the actual, uh, the, they're like boards that you could use. Um, what did she? I forget the name. Um, but anyway, it's like a circle board, and you can use your pendulum to get answers on, you know, questions that you have. I thought that was kind of cool. So, like, you know, depending um, on how you program your pendulum, you can basically ask a question in your head and then have your a pendulum like basically over this board and then it'll swing in the direction of your answer it's so cool um so like a little picture of that a little visualization of that think about a circle um it has like yes no it has letters where you can spell it out it has numbers if you wanted to ask anything with numbers um yeah, stuff like that. So it was really cool. So yeah, I might be purchasing one of those boards really soon. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then after that, we had dinner. And then we um, had an overview of the equipment. Now, again, I can't remember all of the equipment names. But basically, if you're into like watching the paranormal, your normal things like a REM pod, which basically if spirits in the vicinity it'll go off letting you know that hey the energy has changed in this area spirit is over here um they used cat balls which are little balls that have lights and if spirits around and they decide they want to push these balls around it'll light up and you'll see it move across the floor um where they had dowsing rods which basically you're holding these two copper rods um and if you can ask questions and it'll like direct you with yes no if you're asking for directions it'll sh point you in the direction of where you need to go it's the coolest thing so if you've ever looked into dowsing rods check those out um they had an sls camera which basically um maps out if a uh, spirit is in the room so basically it's able to capture like the physical body of a human and then if something outside of that um decides to show up it'll show up in this camera um so and that was used in one of the cabins that we investigated which i'll share about later um and then we also used um k2 meters um there's a different uh kinds there's ones that just light up so basically it goes from green to red and obviously the more you go to red the stronger the energy is um the other k2 meters actually had temperature on there so you could see if temperature changes were happening and um what else was there we also use an ovulus which basically if spirit wanted to use words um they could basically manifest energy and put words into that ovulus and it'll pop up for us to be able to see and um analyze uh let's see what else is there um and that's all i can think of at the moment um, so once we had an overview on what tools there were and how to use them, we started our first investigation and we went to cabin number seven. So um, when we went to cabin number seven, uh, there were, I, I remember a few of the ladies were using dowsing rods and they were asking questions such as, are there any spirits here? And then the dowsing rods would turn to the yes, however it was programmed with that person that was holding it. Um, and then we asked the direction of where they were and then the dowsing rods pointed in the direction of where spirit was. So then we used the K2 meter in that area and then of course the K2 meters were going off, which was so cool. Um, we also had put down a REM pod down in that in the cabin. So, again, whenever spirit was around and it would touch the thing, we knew spirit was there. And it did go off a few times. Um, okay, so the person, one of the participants was able to um, actually connect with the spirit and, like, have a conversation. Oh, yes, there was, sorry, during, there was also a time where, um, so the lady I'm talking about, um, there was a, um, an equipment where she would put 
earphones on and can hear like the responses. So for instance, we, the participants would ask Spirit questions and then she would actually receive the answers and just um, say them as she heard them. So she not ne didn't necessarily hear what the questions were. Her job was just to hear what it said in that, in the earphones. Um, so we had learned that um, in cabin seven, a teen by the name of Emily was being held there. She was being held there by a predator by the name of Carl. And we learned that he was a local um, in the area. And apparently he did like the younger generation. So Emily wasn't the first and I don't believe she was the last. Um, Carl was a bad guy and yeah, his energy was not good at all. Um, he did come through in our trans configuration. Um, exercises during the physical mediumship so i'll share about that later but um yeah um basically when we were talking to emily again i said she was a teen um and she said that all she needed was love to feel safe um oh and one thing that i did learn during this trip um was that you know with different for places that have paranormal activity and it's one of those attraction type places they actually request that we don't send spirits home if we have that ability because that's the revenue <laughs> which i think is kind of interesting but i totally get that so really um throughout this experience it's all about experiencing it and then what we did was we just sent love and light to be able to you know help the spirits out we didn't do, we couldn't send anybody up or anything like that if we had that ability um all we could do is just send love and light so anyhow um so yeah so um so emily was a was a very strong spirit that came through and um, basically let us know that there were lots of children in her realm that were basically with her and um, yeah all she needed to feel safe was to receive love so that's what we did for her um, we also sent healing to everyone all the spirits that were in that in that um, cabin then we moved on to um, cabin number five. Um, so there was actually two sides to cabin five. So there was 5A and 5B. And I hope I don't get this next up. But 5A was the lighter side. There were more uh, children, spirits there having a good time and just being joyful. 5B actually had a portal and like different spirits were coming in and out of there and it literally was right next to um the bathroom um the same person who was doing the communication with emily she actually has special gifts and she was actually standing near the portal and could feel the different energies coming through um so then she was like oh that doesn't feel good so she kind of moved over to the left a little bit so she wasn't in direct contact with that portal but basically she could feel the heaviness the static she said the energy felt angry and just yeah it just didn't feel good um but she was able to hold it and to be able to help us you know learn from her as far as what she was experiencing and whatnot um and uh, during this time in cabin five, we did have the SLS camera, the ovulus going, the one where it pulls up the words. Um, again, we had K2 meters and cat balls, I believe. Um, I was drawn to this room to stay in this room the most of the time. I did go into 5A. I did feel how light it was in there, but I was really drawn to 5B. And... Um, so next to the lady who was standing next to the portal, I want to say I was one, two, I was like the third person over and there was blue orbs showing up in the, um, in the SLS camera. I don't know what that was, but there was basically blue orbs and it was, you know, sitting on some people and whatnot. So, but at one point 
the blue orb was on my chest. And at that time, Jamie was like, all right, Sarah Beth, turn your shaman on. And I'm like, what do you mean? So I was like, okay, first, let me ground myself. <laughs> so I made sure I grounded myself and protected myself. And then I was like, do you mean like with my voice? She was like, however, I'm like, okay. So I took a deep breath and then I started singing the heart centered awe. Uh, now, I started with my voice, then all of a sudden, my voice cracks, and it goes super deep, and I sounded like a man. Like, okay, Jody, the person I rode up where I uh, rode up to the camping trip with, she actually has been to my cacao ceremonies, and she was like, you never have sounded like that, and I was like, I know, it was a trip. So then, you know, I was singing my Oz and then I was like, okay, let me try changing it to O for, um, you know, personal power protection. I'm not protection, but personal power. So again, I was singing the O and oh my goodness, like again, it was just so deep. And, you know, as I was chanting, um, the other members who were in the room were like, dude, when you were chanting... Like, I got chills all over my body. I don't know what that was, but, yeah, as you were chanting, I just chills and chills. So, yeah, that was a trip, right? So, um, after that, um, you know, kind of, I released whatever that energy was. Um, Jamie was like, it's your turn to come look at this camera so you can see what the heck is happening here. And so, you know, I was able to switch over and see. And I was like, oh, man, you can see these blue orbs. You can see the formation of the non-human spirit because it maps it out like stick figures. Um, and I was just so, like, fascinated. You know, it's, like, so cool because, like I said, you, you see this on Ghost Adventures. And to actually be doing it yourself, you're like, whoa, this is so cool. Anyways... Um, um, I could see when they actually switched over to, all right, let's go ahead and, you know, close it down. Let's go ahead and send healing to this enter this room and this cabin. And you could just see the energy change. Um, the orbs disappeared and like you could feel the energy kind of lift and lighten. So again, we could not send anybody home, but what we could do was send love, light and healing. And that's what we did to close out the space. And, you know, my first thought, you know, after doing this um, whole investigation was, dude, the people who are sleeping in these cabins, I can only imagine. Because, <laughs> man, I, like I said, we already made the decision we were sleeping with the lights on. <laughs> Just for the first night to get used to the place and whatnot. And so, um, yeah, basically we got to the room. I said my prayers, I put my protection on, I was like, dude, I, I asked spirit to keep me protected, I said I wanted to sleep, um, and of course, you know, I didn't sleep, I got a couple hours sleep, um, if anything, you know, I wake up and toss and turn, and then go to sleep for another half hour, and then wake up again, so, again, with stuff like that, in a place that I'm not familiar, like, it's hard for me to sleep, and so, just know that, I didn't sleep pretty much the whole weekend. By the time I got home, I slept the whole day. And I was like, holy crap, I slept the whole day. Anyways, so going into day two, which was um, Saturday, um, of course, we had breakfast. And then what we did was we pulled intention cards. And so um, my intention card that came out was safe travel and i was like of course because you know i had set the intention that next year was going to be the year that i travel and i'm traveling for work meaning my cacao ceremonies and shamanic sessions and doing all that so i set that intention and here comes this card and then um as we're eating breakfast um Jamie pulls it out a second deck. It's the crow. I can't remember what the actual date and that name of the deck is called, but it was a crow deck. And this card was supposed to tell us what was in the way of us achieving um, or blocking us from being able to achieve what it is that we want to do. And the card that I pulled was routine. And so when I pulled this card, I was like, okay, um, this is quite divine timing because 
it was for me, I've developed a new routine within the last two weeks, a new morning ritual, you know, doing meditation or trance to be able to stay, you know, get into that silence mode. And then, you know, doing all the things, right? So I've developed a new routine, which allows me to really focus on being productive in my day and um, being able to see things in new ways. So, you know, all that good stuff. Um, and then <clears throat> our last card was a card that we were pulled for our sound bath meditation, which was happening after breakfast. And what's so interesting is I've been talking about finding my soul family, right? And my community, my tribe. And the the card that I did pull was the root chakra card, which was relating to family, tribe, and community. And so... And my intention during the meditation since I built this, uh, since I pulled this car was to really connect into being able to build my tribe and find my, you know, build my community, find my tribe and literally make them family. You know, it's all about really, I really wanted to find my soul family and create that in San Diego and be able to share that with whoever wants to be a part of that. So um, during the sound bath meditation, which basically, um, was crystal singing bowls, um, I remember Jamie putting, um, she had, uh, these body tuning forks and she basically had, um, uh, rung them on underneath my feet and on my ankles. And what's so interesting was when that was happening, um, again, that's like a vibrational tool, right? So as that thing was um, vibrating on my foot, I could feel energy releasing from my legs and and my, my root chakra, basically. Um, and obviously, so basically, Jamie is also a medium, and obviously, she tunes in during these times. And she was like, yeah, we got to just release out the root chakra. So, you know, of course, all these cards that are pulled were definitely um, on the money. And so, yeah, after that, um, after the sound bath, uh, basically, we were given a little break to do what we needed to do to integrate from the first night because... You know, some of us were really tired and some of us didn't sleep because of that activity. So we were able to have some time to ourselves. And so what I did for myself was I did some personal investigating. So that was the interesting part. I actually had the ovulus with me as well as my phone, um, which has a ghost hunting tool um, as well as, um, a K2 meter. Nothing really popped off on the K2 meter. Um, but I did get some interesting things come up on the ovulus as well as my phone. And so when I went off on my own, I was like, all right, I'm going to set the intention to connect with spirit. Again, my intention is always to be open to it. Um, again, I did have my boundaries that, you know, they are not allowed to enter my body. Um, but again, but they are enter able to, you know, inform my field so that I am aware and conscious of you know, what exactly is happening. So, anywho, I was like, I set the intention to connect to spirit. And I was like, all right, spirit, if you are here, I like to, I am open to receiving messages through this ovulus. So, basically, I said, if you want to speak, put your words into this ovulus. Um, and then, of course, my phone also had the ghost hunting tool, which actually shows me, like, the fluctuations and how what the energy looks like and so i would be able to see and stop and be like oh okay let me stop here and see what words come through okay so you know i was just kind of like traveling around the campsite i didn't go very far i didn't go into any cabins other than my own um so the first my first investigation was my own cabin so i went in there i was like kind of like heart pumping because I was like, oh my God, I sleep here. What if something really comes up? So anyways, I was like, nope, I'm not going to be scared. I'm going to own my ground and be like, look, if it doesn't feel good, I'm just going to basically command it away and it'll just go away. So I go in, I am, you know, basically just, you know, using the K2 meter just to see if anything was in there. And then as I was going towards the bathroom, towards my right along the wall, I get a lot of like activity on my phone showing that the that there's energy there and the minute that i started feeling that energy as well 
um, the name Lauren pops up. Okay, so I was like, oh, that's interesting. So I was like, Lauren, is that you? Are you here? Because it was really strong. And the words that came up on my phone said, almost there. I was like, holy crap, what? <laughs> but the energy was there. So that was so interesting. I was like, okay, Lauren, it was nice talking to you. <laughs> but, you know, after I said that, like... I didn't feel there was no energy there anymore, and, like, that was that. And, you know, I went into my room. Nothing came through on the room. Um, and then um, I went into the bathroom, and nothing really came, popped off there. So I just left. Um, so then I leave my cabin, and then there's actually a bench right outside my cabin. So I close the door, and I sit on the bench. And again, I'm sitting on the bench. I'm asking, you know, if spirits around. Again, if you have any words, put it in this ovulus and whatnot. So I'm sitting there and the words Paula come up, wrench come up, tool. I'm like, okay, Paula, are you here? Were you hurt with a wrench? And, you know, nothing really come up. So I'm asking questions. I'm like, where is this wrench? And then it pops up corner. I'm like, what corner? So I'm looking at all the corners. I didn't see anything, obviously. But like, I was just like, oh, that's interesting. Um, so yeah, I was like, okay, they're, they are communicating, but like, I'm not really getting, you know, too much. So I didn't really learn too much about the wrench, but I mean, it sounded like there was definitely something there that happened with a tool in that area. Um, as I was, you know, traveling around the place, um, I found Jody again. And so like, you know, Joe, then Jody started, you know, coming around with me and we started investigating. And then, um, we were, there was a volleyball over by, um, the parking lot that we saw. So we threw it back up over near the volleyball court and just walked up that way. And over there, we found another one of our participants by the name of O. And she was like, hey, ladies, because she saw that we were investigating. She was like, hey, if you guys are investigating, uh, check this out. And well, mind you, we have people with gifts who are in this retreat, right? So everyone has their own little thing. So she was like, if you want to check something out, there's some low-level energy over here. And so I was like, okay, cool. So I went over there with the equipment. And um, what was interesting was the ovulus was picking up some words. So let me tell you, there was picking up Jack, Mike, um, Catch. Uh, what else was there? Sacrifice. Um, I can't remember what else. Um, but anyway, so we went over there. So that's where I was picking up those those words. And then so I was like, and O's building and learning about her gifts too. So she's basically just following the instinct and the intuition. She was like, the energy wants you to throw a ball, you know. So there's different, there was, there was this thing of ball. There's this little um, bin of different size balls, you know, soccer ball, volleyball, um, you know, softballs, that kind of stuff, right? And um, she was directed to the theme of balls, and she was like, is it this ball, this ball? No. Nope. The first ball we pick up was a softball. And then when we pick up the softball, she was like, no, that's not it. And then she picks up the soccer ball. She was like, yes, this one's it. And then she's picking up the, she's like, okay, so we have this soccer ball. She's like, oh, she, again, we're just following the instinct. She was like, um, the energy wants us to go over there. So we're over there. So we're just following, oh, we're just following what, you know, what she's picking up. And she was like, she wants, the energy wants us to play catch. I'm like, oh, that's weird. I'm like, so what, throw the ball to me? <laughs> so we throw, she throws the ball to me. She's like, the energy still wants us to move over. So we go over. So again, following where she wants us to go. So we end up in a parking spot that says handicapped. Now, she was like, this has to deal with someone who has having trouble using their legs because obviously the handicap. And then she's like, hold on. 
And then she looks directly at Jody. She's like, this is about you, Jody. And what I did forget to tell you is Jody is actually on crutches right now. Um, she recently had surgery on her foot and ankle, foot or ankle. I, sorry. Sorry, Jody, if that's all wrong. But uh, basically, she was on crutches for this trip. And um, and so, Josh, you know, Jody's following us and getting to the... Um, to the handicap spot she's like jody this is about you and i'm like oh no way i'm like what are you picking up and she was like she was like oh crap she was like i didn't know that that um the uh, basketball hoop is here i'm like why what does that mean she's like I'm, I'm connecting the dots so basically she's like okay this message was for someone handicapped right now well that's jody um again remember i told you the names mike and jack Mike is actually Jody's father. And Jack is her dog. Was her dog. <laughs> or his dog. And so it was Jody's father coming through. And when she was younger, their favorite pastime was playing catch. Isn't that a trip? I got the goosebumps as she, as she was um, connecting the dots. And then she's like, oh, now I know the reason why they brought me here. Because basically it's showing or telling Jody that she's still in the game because there was a basketball hoop there. But there was also like a cone there. Um, so and she was like, oh, and they're also showing me because basically, again, oh. Excuse me. O's receiving the energy to direct her attention to that cone. She was like, oh, but you do have to take caution. Um, you do have to take caution with whatever it is that you're doing. But just know that you're still in the game. And so, like, when she said that, like, goosebumps everywhere. And, like, how she put that together. That was awesome. Um, but... Uh, let me back up. We didn't know Mike and Jack were related to her father um, until Jody actually had alone time to put it all together. So some of it was like, OK. Um, yeah. And so, like, basically, it was just one of those that, like she took in the information. She had to go in and process and then she put it all together and then it was like, holy crap, this was all. Yeah. So it was very interesting. We thought that was really cool. And, um, yeah. So, as they were talking, again, I went off on my own. I decided to go towards the main road because that's where I was I was feeling a pull to do. So, again, I had the Ovulus, I had the K2 meter, and my phone. Um, and so, once that was happening, and there was, I, I needed to kind of reestablish my connection. So, I was like, okay, Spirit, if you're with me, I need to know that you understand and whatnot. So I started singing. And so I'm singing and the word sing pops up on the phone. I'm like, okay. And I'm like, all right. If you know about me, what do you know about me? And then words started popping up on the phone. Um, a few that I remember at the moment are therapist, um, determination, invention, cart, on chair when they said on chair i'm like oh i do massages on my massage chair so i take it as that um team because i'm building a team right now and stuff like that i was like holy moly yep they sure know and we are connecting so okay i trust this so the closer i get to the um main road few words pop up on the ovulus um preacher bishop evening the number five ride water um what else was there religion christian uh few names popped up um yeah so those are the things that i can remember and the reason i'm telling you this is because there's going to be confirmation later so you know as i'm getting this information i'm you know taking note of what's coming through um <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. And so I was like, this is really cool. So, you know, um, and then, you know, I'm, I'm staying there. And then, of course, then there's a mini break. There's like nothing happening. So then I start walking back up to the uh, to the lodge area. Um, basically, once I get to the lodge area, it's time for reading. So I end my investigation. I thank spirit. And basically, I'm off to my reading. 
And so, you know, everyone who is a participant got a reading. Not everyone got their reading the first time around. So um, this was my chance to get my reading because um, I was finally done with my little break. And basically, what's so crazy is, like, everything was on point as far as the reading goes. Basically, it was, the main thing is I need to slow down, which makes a lot of sense because I've just been so on the go. And, and basically, slowing down for me is just, again, remaining present and not being so, I got to do this, I got to do that, and blah, blah, blah. So, yes, I get it, Spirit. I will be slowing down. I have slowed down a lot, actually. Um, but to also work on more protection because I'm going into a lot of things just so open and when I do that, I basically get drained. I take on other people's energy and pain and it just really like bogs me down. And of course, when that happens, I need extra time to be able to recuperate my body and my energy. Um, so basically, under spirits just letting me know, you know, slow down you know, everything's good, and that, you know, everything is in line with me for receiving abundance, and, and travel, and again, building my community. So after that, um, again, we did have, um, dinner, then we went into physical mediumship, and for those of you who don't know what that is, um, basically, we worked with different things, um, oh, we worked on different things to demystify, uh, people's fears as and um, whatnot. So, first thing we did was work with Ouija boards. Not everyone used a Ouija board, and not everyone was comfortable. Um, but just know that I'm always open, and again, I have my own protection practices and cleansing practices, as well as the um, support of the facilitators there. So, again, know that we did i went into this consciously and, and having the tools of being able to clear and whatnot so just know that i did this in a conscious manner so it wasn't something that i knew it was something that i knew that i would be able to be get cleared from if anything were to happen so um so i did participate in the ouija board part and what was interesting was we connected with a spirit named sarah and she actually confirmed that one soul did uh, die by the wrench. And um, what else was there? Okay, and, and she was the one who confirmed that there was um, an accident uh, with a van um, that involved five kids and they all drowned. And when we did the comparison with the history, basically we all compared notes and we learned that there was definitely an accident on the main road where um, the driver of this van fell asleep. They crashed into rocks and then ended up in the lake and they all drowned. And so that was very interesting. And both sides of these camps were religious camps so that was also very interesting um so yeah so it was very cool to get that that confirmation that what we were pulling through on our devices was actually what had happened so wow that was that's cool to be able to get that validation not knowing what the history was um okay and then we did a thing called table tipping um, so there's this thing where you can table tip, um, basically, um, for instance, the first demonstration was using a dinner tray table, and you can use two to four people for that, you know, one in each corner. Basically, yeah, what you do is you kind of like get the, the table going by just um, going, you know, however you guys decide to um, use the movement for the for the table, whether it's you know, going clockwise or counterclockwise with your fingertips to get the table tipping. And what ends up happening is once spirit is available, they'll be able to manipulate the direction of the table. So you can definitely ask questions and direct spirit to do things like, for instance, guide this table towards a certain person. And then, you know, you're doing the movement and then it starts moving, which is really cool. Now, there was one, to, um, another instance where... I don't know if you've seen there. Um, it wasn't a six foot table that they used. I think it was a four foot table. So basically they had, I want to say six people there and they were moving that big table all around the room, which was really cool. 
Um, I didn't participate in that because I just wanted to chill for a minute. I just wanted to observe. I thought that was really cool. Um, and then we went into trans configuration. Now this, especially this exercise, um, you never, ever, ever want to do by yourself. And you never want to do it without the proper spiritual support that can help you come back. Okay. Now, again, I was open to doing this um, because I trusted the facilitators to help me come out of it. I also set my boundaries. So basically, before I even sat in the chair and did it, I intended for spirit to that they were allowed to come into my field. They were allowed to inform my field if I needed to, if anything were to come out that needed to come out as far as messages come but they were not allowed to enter my body. So that was the intention. And then that was that. So boundary set, right? So the minute I set that intention, it was go time. So I'm going to set the scene here. So transconfiguration is actually um, a change of form or appearance. So that's what that means. And um, what we did was we all sat in a circle and I was handed a flashlight with the red taping over it, basically making it a red light. And so what I did was I held it to my face as if I were going to tell ghost stories. Um, and so sitting there, basically all I had to do was basically sit there and allow for spirit to transfigure my face, so to speak. And all I did was hold the flashlight to my face and just look forward and set that intention and then once i did that it was go time and so what happens ends up happening is is spirit takes over and is able to change the um, ectoplasm of my face as i allow it to so as i was doing this and you know just sitting there allowing and being open um everyone was instructed to just basically uh, put out there what they saw and so what this what some people saw was um an old medicine woman with white hair they saw uh, a native american with war paint they saw uh or they saw uh, one person saw a lady with my hair um saying that it formed into snakes at the top of my head it's she said it maybe rose up to like four inches um others have seen um uh, an elder, an indig indigenous elder, um, an ancient human. She said that I didn't look like an, a modern day human, like I look like an OG human, if that made sense. Um, some facial features that they noticed was like the bridge of my nose uh, disappeared. Uh, oh, they did see a male with a goatee and mustache. My eyes got bushy, or eyebrows got bushy. Uh, my eyes got smaller. Uh, they saw some ceremonial markings on my face. Some people saw light markings on my forehead. Um, trying to think of what other things people saw. Uh... Yeah, they they just basically saw, like, you know, my face changed. Like, yeah, it was so cool because knowing that my soul is an ancient soul, to be able to have them say that they saw all those things uh, could, possi could possibly have been all my lifetimes. Um, but you never know. Like, um, but it was just so interesting how they said that, like, basically, as you hold the light up, you can see the different shadows change in my face, where you can see more defined cheekbones, or again, where my the bridge of my nose um, disappeared, or like, even the way the lighting changed, you could see some darkness in there. Um, but for the most part, um, yeah, everything was so cool. Um, from what I hear, there may be pictures that will be available, um, soon. So as soon as I have that, I'll be sharing that. And, um, yeah, I, I can't wait to see those. Um, and then of course we did other people Oh, and going back. So if you recall, um, cabin seven, the spirit of Emily and Carl now, the person who was able to communicate with those spirits is also able to hold that energy in her body and be able to um, channel whatever energies are coming through. 
And so as we were doing the physical mediumship exercises, she was actually in meditation mode. And we were instructed to not touch her because if we were to touch her, there is a possibility her whole body could be shot, um, which isn't a good thing. Um, so basically, she's basically building her energy to be able to hold that spirit, right? So when we got to her during the configura transconfiguration process, the minute she was able to pull through these energies, Carl came out first. And he was the most darkest, creepiest energy ever. Like, his eyes was just like... Oh, they were just one of those. It's like, oh, I just wanted to look him in the eyes and be like, how dare you? Like, oh, it made me so angry. Like, I felt angry when I saw that. Um, but again, I had to remind myself I need to stay in observer mode and be able to op be open to the experience, right? So as I'm observing, he's just scanning the room. looking. It just almost felt like he was just looking to see whose next victim was. And it was just like, it was eerie, you know? And so... You know, I just held my ground and you could just, and, she, you know, as, you know, she was holding this energy, she was also feeling what she was feeling. So feeling like anger, he just had, he was so angry. She said he was so angry. And then um, he also was feeding off of people's fears, like it made him feel good. So like, you know, um, there was a female sitting right next to her and, um, like he could supposedly she he could feel her fear and it was just like allowing him to thrive you know like it made him feel good and um yeah you could just feel his darkness and and you know like it just oh like we're, we just wanted to know why he was doing these things and again it just i don't know um once, like, it felt too much, once it felt, like, intense, the facilitator actually sent him off with Archangel Michael to the back of the room, and um, she was able to basically take that energy off of her, and when that happened, she was left with the energy of Emily, which was so much lighter, and basically, Emily asked if we could just send her love, and so, you know, in my mind and my heart, I was sending her love during that session, and she was able to connect with her mother, reconnect her with her mother. Um, and in her feedback, she said that she was able to feel like this energy come from the back of her, like the, her lower back and like come up over her chest and like come around as a hug. So she was able to help like connect that energy together uh, so that they could build the energy together so that Carl isn't as strong around her. So... Yeah, so yeah, we sent love and light to the energy of Carl as well as Emily and her mother and um, sent healing that way. But uh, yeah, the feeling of being able to see what actually Carl looked like and seeing like the shades of darkness around his eyes and his cheeks and his and his forehead. Oh, it's just, oh goodness. It was just, I don't know. I, I wanted to kill him. <laughs> but you know, whatever. But it was just, yeah. It's just so crazy how real it all is. And, um, yeah. And, again, it was more of... It's like it, what I've learned throughout this whole process. Again, everything's all energy. And, um, again, throughout the whole process, I also remember what Jody mentioned. If you can picture the most scariest thing ever and still be able to send light, you are protected 100%. And so, you know, I kept that at the back of my mind. And so I unfortunately did not see anything per se, but I definitely did, um, again, feel everything for me is about feeling like I felt, um, the energies, I could feel the heaviness, I could feel, I got chills when I felt the darkness and then like I felt the uneasiness, but at the same time I was like, okay, thank you for allowing me to feel this because now I know what that feels like. And so, you know, I basically conquered a lot of my fears on this trip, like knowing, okay, everything is energy and if it doesn't feel good, I can definitely allow that feeling to go away immediately. And that's by calling in my guides and my protection and basically commanding it to go and yeah. It was so cool. And like finally the next morning, the check Sunday morning, we had breakfast and then we had our runes uh, class. And I never knew what runes were um, until Sunday morning, and which was really cool. Basically, it's a way of divination. Um, there's different runes that you can choose from. Um, basically, um, they're like stones that have um, 
symbols on them and the way you read them. Again, they're, um, you can use this circular board where you can basically uh, shuffle them up and then allow all the runes or the stones to drop and whatever is face up you read, whatever is not face up, those aren't meant for you to read and then that's your reading of runes. Um, the way you would do it, again, is you also ask questions, and the answers are actually all positive as far as the runes are concerned. Um, there's sets of, like, 25, but there's also, like, a set of four, which basically has all the symbols on all the different sides. Um, I found the, the, the quantity of four was much easier to handle. Um, and I actually might think of looking into buying a set of runes and playing with that and seeing how that would help my practice. But having my reading and asking my questions on what I um, asked um, and getting the reading from the person who was reading me was was super beneficial and it really gave me hope and motivation. And in doing so, I actually did make a connection that day um, that would actually help me with um, progressing with my, the design of my product. So that was awesome. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah, so during this trip, we made some new soul fam friends and, you know, again, new people of like-minded individuals. So now, you know, I have my spiritual community. Now I have my paranormal investigation community, <laughs> which is so cool. And, um, yeah, so, yeah, you guys, if anything, I know there's, you know, different views and observations and, belief systems around paranormal investigations uh, but you know I'm one of those who is curious and has always been drawn and attracted to this and again knowing that my soul is over a thousand years old that I have done this already and you know in this lifetime it's just more about really honing in and mastering my own energy and then again also you know being able to bring through the light that needs to come through for healing um, as well as sharing my experiences for wisdom and medicine. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed my, um, my uh, experience of the mystical weekend in the woods. So this will actually be an annual thing. So if you guys would be interested in joining me next year, there um, every year there's going to be a change up in, in activities. So if you'd like to join me, like let me know and I'll keep you on my personal list so that when it does come up for next year, I will personally invite you and let's do this together. It's going to be so much fun. Um, yeah, so again, um, I'm all about following my heart and what interests me and what keeps me curious and excited. And this is one of those things. So thank you for joining me on this episode of Let the Sun Shine In. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Have a beautiful and blessed day, y'all. I love you. Bye now. Wow, that sun was surely shining through today. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Let the Sun Shine In. I truly appreciate you tuning in and being open and enlightened by today's conscious conversation. I invite you to share your love by rating, subscribing, and or leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts. This is the best and only way to let me, Princess Sunshine, know you're enjoying the sun and to keep on shining. Make sure to check out the show notes for links to all of my goodies, including my socials and booking links. Until next time, keep on shining!